I'm not ashamed. How was Jesus the light of the world according to John 9? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of John on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to John chapter 9. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 12. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So John chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of God sh should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How are your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Then he said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. In our last few lessons, we've been discussing a back-and-forth conversation between Jesus and some of the unbelieving Jews. Jesus was claiming to be sent from the Father, while the unbelieving Jews were denying it. The conversation came to an end when Jesus claimed to be the I Am, and thus existing before Abraham. The Jews took up stones to stone him for blasphemy. But Jesus escaped the temple by passing through their midst, something that Jesus had done before. Coming to chapter 9, we seem to have a passage of time here. John would later give us a clearer passage of time in chapter 10, but from the events at the end of chapter 8 and the ones here, the temperature in Jerusalem concerning him has seemed to cool down. For later on, when Jesus speaks, they, they are still not seeking to stone him. Perhaps then, after Jesus left the temple in John 8, he returned to Galilee for a short time and then began his Perean ministry that started from the end of Luke 9 through Luke 10. In that time, he would have commissioned the 70 to go out and teach. He would have taught the parable of the Good Samaritan and would have visited Mary and Martha in Bethany, where Martha was worried about serving her guests and asked Jesus to rebuke Mary for listening to him and not helping her, something Jesus would not do. If we place the events of John 9 after the events of Luke 10, that would make sense why Jesus was in Jerusalem again, for Bethany is near Jerusalem. So in verse 1 of John 9, we have Jesus walking and seeing a man who was born blind. His disciples are with him, something we haven't seen explicitly since John 6, and ask Jesus a question. This blind man, who sinned? His parents or him that he was born blind? It is evident throughout the Old Testament that the Jews believed that sickness and disease was a direct result of someone's sin. Why is there pain and suffering in this world? It is because of sin, because before sin entered this world, there was no pain or suffering. But even though we know today that some sins can lead to genetic defects in children, it is not true that all disease and suffering is caused by someone's specific sins. And it is certainly not caused by the sins of the unborn, because the unborn do not possess sin. That the Jews thought so, so in it is a misunderstanding of Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, which says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of, to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. When we studied that passage, we said that what is meant is that the children will often pay the consequence for their parents' sins. Why? Well, for one, children often learn from their parents. So if the parents hate the Lord, it is likely that the children will as well and are thus deserving of punishment. But second, the nature of sin is such that it rarely only affects us, but others as well. 
If I steal from someone, I have sinned against God, but the person I steal from suffers the consequences of lost property. And if I had children, my children would suffer the loss of their father for a time when I am put in jail. I am the only one charged with sin, yet others who are innocent suffer the consequences of my sin. It is not that God charges the innocent with sin, but that sin does often lead to consequences for others. In the case of John 9, though, the fact that this man was born blind was not a result of sin, either his parents' sin or his. However, the fact that this man was born blind would provide an opportunity for Jesus to reveal the works of God to the people. When John 1 said that Jesus would reveal the Father to mankind, this is one of the ways he would do it, through his miraculous working, which is not only done because of the Father, but it shows the mercy of the Father and his compassion too. Now let's not think that God smote this man blind from birth so that Jesus could heal him later, but that God's providence worked in a way that this man happened to be in Jesus' path so that Jesus could heal him. The reason that Jesus must show the works of the Father then was because it was still day. In other words, his ministry was still ongoing. However, his, his death was approaching, probably now about four and a half months away. Night was coming when no man can work. As long as Jesus was in the world, he was the light of the world. Since this is the same statement that Jesus made in John 8 verse 12, we're going to count this as just another application of Jesus' second I am statement found in John. In John 9, though, the physical application will be a little different. The spiritual application will be the same. Back in John 8, Jesus, as the light of the world, was physically referring to the dawning of the day, how Jesus was the physical creator of day and night. However, here in John 9, Jesus is showing that he is the creator of physical sight, the creator of man, in that he is going to heal this man's sight. Of course, the spiritual application is the same, in that Jesus' words will bring us out of the darkness of sin into God's light of truth and righteousness. How Jesus healed this man is unique. Usually, Jesus speaks the word, words and the miracles performed. In this case, though, the man who was born blind had to show a little faith. Jesus spat on the ground, made clay out of the dirt and saliva, and then anointed the man's eyes with the clay. He told the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a pool in Jerusalem, and he would receive his sign. The man had faith in Jesus, not that the clay had any magical powers, but that if he did what Jesus said, he would receive his sight. And so he washed in the pool of Siloam, and he received his sight. This was the sixth sign that Jesus has performed in this book to show that he was the Son of God. Now this man's neighbors, when they saw him walking around, asked if it was him who was born blind, for he could now walk around without any assistance as one who could see. And many replied that it wasn't him, but one who looked like him. The man, though, confirmed that it was in fact him. They wanted to know how he received his sight, to which the man relayed to them what Jesus did for him. These people wanted to know where Jesus was, but the man didn't know. We'll continue with this story, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 9, verses 13 to 23, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.